What's up guys? Welcome to the 2022 announcement video of KWA's newest product releases. We're starting this video out with two new releases in the VM4 and RM4 lineups. In the RM4, we're getting an all new Q10 and in the VM4, we're getting an all new M10. Check them out. Now the first one we're gonna be talking about is the newest addition to the VM4 lineup. This is the M10. As you can see, very similar to the other VMR series, it's an M4 based platform, AEG. There are some really cool changes. They've obviously gone with an updated silhouette, the raised upper receiver, new handguard, which I love because it comes with M-Lock as well as Picatinny across the top with plenty of venting to keep it light up front. And they've got, of course, the included flip up front and rear PTS sights and the enhanced polymer grid. Grip. Other changes include going back to a traditional style crane stock, so you've got a little bit more battery compatibility and those classic looks. You'll also notice that they've gone with a really slick looking e-magazine style. This is their MS120C, the C denoting that it is a cutoff magazine. And that's because this new series from KWA's VM4 uh, features their original cutoff feature. Now, there were a lot of airsofters looking for that really realistic cutoff feature. And it was a great way of kind of updating the design, but going back to a more traditional sense of realism. The gun will stop firing when the magazine's empty, simply insert a new MS120C, hit the bolt release and go to town. And for those looking for even more realism, the MS120C is selectable between 30 and 120 rounds. So if you're looking for really hyper-realistic games like Milsims, where you wanna be reloading often and really fulfilling that realistic sense in Airsoft, switching it to 30 means you're gonna be reloading a lot more. If you want more mag capacity, if you're not so stringent on that realism, 120 rounds each mid-cap functions beautifully and still has that cutoff functionality. Now, all of that is achieved thanks to the AEG 2.5 gearbox, which not only enables that cutoff feature, but also has variable FPS. The next addition, of course, is to their RM4 line, featuring their Q10, which is an all new platform, much like the VM4, with some subtle differences. You still have the raised upper receiver with a new handguard that features Picatinny rail for a more classic look. Again, the flip up sights are included. You've got the PTS grip, the awesome crane stock, as well as ambidextrous charging handle on both models. Now, the major difference here between the RM4 and the VM4 is recoil. The RM4 features the AEG3 gearbox, which still has that cutoff functionality, but also incorporates simulated recoil, which in my opinion is one of the most realistic and most reliable recoil systems in the AEG market. Not only does this gun look amazing, but it feels great to shoot. And again, if you're looking for that ultimate realism, this also uses the MS120C magazines, has that cutoff feature, and just looks amazing. But don't just take my word for it about these here in the studio. I'm sure you guys wanna see them shoot. So check this out. here and I'm going to introduce you guys the brand new KO line from KWA. The KO line takes the same features, gearbox, and performance from all of your favorite existing KWA models and drops it into a brand new polymer receiver. With these new polymer receivers, each gun weighs under 5 pounds with a brand new vertical grip and a magazine. Last year, we announced the KO Eve, which is the polymer version of the Ronin T6 slated to release early 2022. And today, we're gonna announce the rest of the KO line. So here it is, the second wave of the KWA Originals lineup. We have Rain, which is the polymer version of the Mod 2, Scarlet, which is the polymer version of the Ronin 47, Iris, which is the polymer version of the TK45, Ava, which is the polymer version of the Mod 1, and Lucy, which is a polymer version of the Mod 3. So now we're gonna get a little bit more in depth and I'm gonna go hands on with the brand new KO line. YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Demo here, back with another video. And yo, I'm about to give you guys an exclusive look 
at the brand new, well, second wave of the KWA KO series. Real quick, if you guys don't know what the KO series is or even why I said second wave, it's because the first version of the KO was announced last year with the EVE. And what the EVE is is basically a polymer version of the T6. And this second wave pretty much takes the rest of the Ronin and QRF lineup and gives them polymer version. And what's dope is that they didn't just copy and paste the original, you know, build into a polymer version. No, they actually kind of changed it up a little bit. So uh, enough of this talking and explaining, I'm actually gonna show you guys each and every model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna breeze through these real quick and show you guys the guns, tell you guys the names, and then I'll get into the details and show you guys the features. And since KWA kicked it off by announcing the Ronin series first with the Eve, which is the polymer version of the Ronin T6, it's only right that I continue the Ronin series and announce the TK45 version, which is Iris, right here. Nice subtle detail that I like, the name of each gun is right here. Next up is the polymer version of the Ronin 47. We have Scarlet. Then there's the polymer version of the QRF Mod 3. This is Lucy right here. We got the Mod 2 counterpart, which in my opinion looks a little different. It looks actually a little bit more aggressive. This is Rain. And um, I don't know, man, but this angle right here looks way more aggressive than the original Mod 2. So I don't know, man, this one gives me even more video game vibes. And then everybody's favorite and one of the most popular. This is the polymer version of the Mod 1, Ava. All right, so now I'm going to get into some details and key features that uh, I actually really like. It kind of makes you stand apart from their original counterparts. So we're gonna take a look at Rain real quick. And first off, I think the first thing you notice about this compared to its counterpart is the upper. One piece monolithic complete polymer constructed upper with uh, M-lock rails and you guys see it. This is a KWA vertical grip. This comes with the gun. Of course you get the front and rear PTF flip up sights. Now taking a closer look at the lower receiver you guys will see as well. That is a, it's a one piece lower uh, with the grip. Kind of gives me some HK vibes. Um, and this trigger, yo, I just noticed, so look at the trigger too, a different shape trigger. Now there's no longer a rear charging handle right here. You guys can see, it's actually up here now. So you rack it back and you see the ejection port. Um, it exposes the hop up unit right here. We got the same adjustable stock and the beautiful thing is that gearbox is the same 2.5 gearbox with the VPS system. So yes, you guys can adjust your FPS if you want to go play indoor, outdoor, depending on BB weights, you name it. Same gearbox, same solid performance, lightweight, more sleek, and uh, I think just overall more comfortable and mobile platform. Yo, also, while I have the Rain model in hand, I want to show you guys something. So the magazines are the exact same as our counterparts. Here I have one of the shorter mags. You guys can see it fits in just as well. If you guys have uh, TK45 magazines, if you guys have the Mod 2, whatever the case may be, um, the existing magazines that you have will work with their counterparts. KWA also told me that each one of these guns is under five pounds, which I'm gonna be honest for a KWA gun, that's that's impressive. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much my little exclusive look at this second wave for the KO series. I don't know about y'all, but they look pretty sleek to me. Uh, if I gotta pick two, it's the mod one and mod two. Y'all know those hold a special place in my heart just because of the it's because of the video, man. Shout out to Ja. And they see me rushing. You can call me Demo. Cause when I get the bus, I shoot it like a freak. Oh, hey. I be on my mind. Keep it on waistline. I be on my grind. Ain't no need to waste time. I ain't hard to find. I be on the baseline. Man, I got a crew that is straight to bust the wood. What's up? 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 I'm gonna stop you, bro. You did that. Nah. But that's enough talking, man. I want to take one of these out to the field. We'll probably dress it up a little bit and uh, let's really see how it performs. All right, y'all. So we are out here at Tac City. They're running like Speed QB night or whatever. So we're gonna see how this goes in a competitive environment. I have Rain right here, which is the polymer version of the Mod 2. Uh, I still gotta get a chrono, but I can definitely like notice the weight difference from the original one. I got the Rain model, a couple mags. And, uh, we're gonna shoot. These mags are kind of old and beat up, so I don't know if they're, if they're all gonna feed, but we'll see. To adjust the hop up, charging handle right here. You can hold it up right there. I do need to adjust this just a bit.
KWA, a leader that has brought the airsoft industry to amazing heights. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if you've been playing the game for decades, you know about KWA. From the Ronin T6 to the VM4 to special editions like the Kaiju 47 or the Mod 1 Limited Edition. Or maybe you have an LM4 or an ever so sold out KMP9. Today, KWA expands on their reputation with a new addition to their lineup. Presenting the Lithgow F90 gas blowback. Getting the chance to visit an airsoft manufacturer's headquarters is a highlight. However, getting a chance to sit and handle an early prototype of a unique gas blowback, that's an honor. And that's the situation that I find myself today. With this, the KWA Lithgow Arms F90, based of course on the Australian rifle that advanced on the familiar Steyr AUG. Now I'm going to say this, I already love this thing without being able to really test the accuracy or the range or even the true power output as this is still an early prototype that is still changing and adapting. I'm still excited. Gas blowback can be a rare sight on the field sometimes, but gas blowback bullpups are even harder to find. Even when it's not being kept behind a staggering paywall, they still don't see much time in the public eye. The plan from KWA is to go public with the F90 gas blowback at $400 to $500. For that price, even if everything on the outside stays exactly the same, you'll definitely get a high quality replica before the AEG version hits the market much later if KWA has their way. Keep your fingers crossed. At nearly 10 pounds or 160 ounces, the KWA F90 features a full metal construction as you would come to expect. With of course, a high strength polymer body that keeps all of the metal parts together. The build construction is solid, even for a prototype, which would explain the weight and the solid feel that I noticed when handling the F90. I was stunned to see that the overall weight was still centered just behind the pistol grip like the real thing, which was done intentionally as this launch will benefit airsoft enthusiasts and anyone who would like to train with a highly accurate Lithgow F90 replica. Of course a model will be produced for airsofters and for the military, but this will be the only version that you'll really see on the market. This project was a product of a military contract. And these are the kind of things that KWA specializes in with law enforcement and on the military side. And KWA have quite a few projects in store for the Gas Bowback outdoor and Milsim community, I'm told. Moving on, the controls will be familiar to anyone who's ever used an AUG for any period of time. Just like how takedown is fast and simple after you push this wedge off to the side. This will make barrel swaps easy. Here's hoping that we'll actually see different barrel lengths produced by KWA, and this will make hop-up adjustments easier as you can see the rotary hop-up right here. There's no tools needed to adjust this hop-up, thankfully. With the addition of the bolt release, you'll be able to lock back your bolt without needing to lock the bolt handle up, nor will you need to manipulate the handle when swapping magazines. Just use this paddle to release the bolt 
and continue the fight. A couple other changes to the AUG besides the overall look of the upper receiver that accepts Picatinny accessories much more easily would be found in the pivoting charging handle and to the trigger. The F90 retains the dual stage trigger mechanism that we've seen in the AUG and in the P90, but if you can't afford to accidentally fire a burst of full auto, then simply pull down the full auto lockout pin. On the other hand, iron sights might not come with this KWA, just like how the real civilian F90 or Atrax is sold, but the long rail up top should fit just about anything. Taking a look at the trigger guard, you may notice this large plastic piece and wonder why it's there. Well, after you slide it out, you'll have a cavity in the guard that would be used with a specific launcher named the SL40 UBGL that we sadly don't have access to in the airsoft world. That's a great addition to detail that some people out there will admire. All around, even for a prototype, I'm impressed. Of course, performance matters the most, so I hope when we see this release in the fourth quarter of 2022, it'll range, it'll be consistent, and it'll do all of that without severe cooldown issues. But from the bayonet mount to the sling points and all the ambidextrous controls and possibilities, I'll do my best to cover them all when we get the full release from KWA. I've made absolutely sure that KWA knows that I want to get one as soon as possible. I really wish I could have gone more in depth now, as something like this is right up my alley. Seeing this with a scope or a short grip is just not enough. I need to play with a short barreled model and throw a suppressor on it. But for now, I think I'll leave you off with a whole lot of shooting clips, but feel free to ask as many questions as you'd like to about the KWA F90 in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to answer all of them. And that's all I have to say about the Lithgow F90 by KWA at the moment. It's needless to say, I'm very excited about this and I cannot wait for it to release. I really wanna thank KWA for sending us out here so I can do videos and photos and make this video. It's been such a great experience and I cannot wait to come back sometime. But I also need to thank the US Airsoft channel members that you see on your screen right now. Every single one of these people really support the channel and you can join them right now by hitting the join button down below or the link in the description. Now, of course, there's much more information about this coming out, or you can go ahead and check out the US Airsoft Instagram page. That will also be linked in the description down below. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. I'm never gonna get over this. This thing's freaking cool.